Hello mate and welcome back to another exciting installment of our Unity VN series. In this video we're going to start working on our user interface, our visual elements. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting that notification icon, that really helps me out. And of course an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons, your names will run across the screen at the end of the video. So the first thing that we want to do is do some sorting out of the things that we have on the screen. Currently we have a canvas on the screen with our background in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my canvas and I'm actually going to rename this and I'm going to call this background image layer like so. And what I'm also going to do is you'll notice down here there is a section that says sorting layer and currently it's set to default. What I want to do is click on that drop down and I'm going to add some sorting layers. I'm going to click on the plus symbol here on the menu that appears. And my new layer I'm going to delete and I'm going to call this image. Uh, and I'm actually going to call it background images. And I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to call this one UI underscore elements like that. And there's a reason why we want to do that and primarily it's because we want to make sure that our background images always remain in the background and don't suddenly appear over the top of our UI elements because that's going to look kind of weird and it's going to knacker our game. So first step complete. What I want to do now is I'm actually going to create a new canvas, a new UI and down here somewhere there is canvas and what I'm going to call this one is UI elements like that nice and simple so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this one in the sorting layer uh, once i've got this one i'm going to just make sure that that's set to sorting layer background images then i'm going to select this one and we need to put some stuff inside this now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new image if you wanted to skip that step you could just go right click there go to ui and then add a new image and what you'll see is that it's created a canvas there and now we can change the name of this what we also have to do is we also have to copy the property so let's scrap all of that nonsense and what we're actually going to do is on our background image layer we're going to right click and we're actually going to click on duplicate the reason we're doing that is that it's going to copy all of our properties regarding scaling across now i can come and delete that background image so that there's no conflict of interest in terms of when we do our search for the background image and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to rename this ui elements ui underscore elements like that hit enter and then in our sorting layer what i'm going to do is set that to ui elements and then we are good to go what i'm going to do now is inside this ui elements i'm actually going to create two images and ui image and i'm going to call the first one dialog box and the second one I'm going to create UI image and I'm going to call this one nameplate like that okay so we have two images and if we was to zoom in now we can see that they're both currently located up there that's fine for now because once we actually give these sprites then we are going to want to move and scale them as necessary but we have the elements in there now what i would recommend you do is inside your assets folder create a new folder called uh, interface elements like that and then inside interface elements now we can create our sprites we can drag our images over the reason i don't want to put them in the resources folder is i don't want to confuse the system by having images in there that we aren't going to use as background images the images folder within the resources folder is only for the images that are part of the story not for the ui elements so best not to confuse things any further than that now I have created a couple of bits using Photoshop just really simple geometric shapes which I'm going to drag in their PNG files and as you can see they are there what I would highly recommend you do is before you continue with this video is load Photoshop or GIMP or whatever image editing software that you're going to use to create your image elements and decide where on the screen you'll want your dialog box to be and how big you want them to be 
because this is the bit that where we get to have some fun and design our interface. So if you haven't already done so, pause this video, go into Photoshop, create yourself some images for the background of your user interface, and then come on back in. What I've got is these here. So what I now need to do is I need to select my dialog box image there, and I'm going to drag that sprite onto the source image like so. And currently our sorting layers appear to be back to front. So what we can do is come and select our UI elements there. And then where we have the sorting layer thing, we hit add sorting layer. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna put our UI elements layer in front of there and see if that makes any difference. And uh, it doesn't appear to have. So if I just drag that over to the top of that, just so that it looks like it's in the right order, we can scale our image so that it's the correct size. You can see that it's there, it's just in the background weirdly. So we're going to just drag that to the right size and make it scale so that it's a sensible scale, drag that down to there. And now we can find out what's going on with our sorting layer, that is UI elements, order in layer is good. That one is background images, ordering layer is there. So let's just come back and see if that is indeed, there we go. So they were the right way around. I was just being an idiot, which is not the first time if I'm being honest. Okay, so there we go, that's correct now. So nameplate is gonna be the same issue. We're gonna drag that into our sprite like so. And now I'm gonna move my nameplate and I'm gonna scale it just so that it looks like it's meant to be part of this UI. I'm gonna actually have it slightly to the right of that gap. This is where my side images are going to be if they exist. So we can leave that like that. So now we've got our images in position. And if I hit play, what we should see is, there you go, they appear over the top of our background images. Currently no text in there because we haven't created the text objects that are going to fill them. However, we have started along the path. So what I'm going to do now is inside my UI elements, I'm actually going to right click on the dialog box and I'm going to UI and I'm going to create a new text mesh pro. What you can see is a little dialog box opens up and saying, do you want to import TMP essentials? And we're going to say Yarp. And once it's done that for a few seconds, you can see we can now close our dialog box and some text has appeared. What we're going to do is we're going to align this as best we can with the top left hand corner of the area of the dialog box and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag this frame to about the size that i want the text the dialog to be and make sure i've not clicked accidentally on the wrong thing and we just want to set this so that it's more or less the right size for the ui element that we're in okay now we get to set some properties our text is white which is perfect what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the font size because that's kind of big. You can do this however you want. You can have the text appear however you want. If you want to copy me, that's absolutely fine. But I would highly recommend that you experiment a little bit. What we've got is I want it to stay left justified because we read left to right in the West. And we want it to be top justified so the text doesn't just appear in the middle of this text box like that. What I've currently got is wrapping is enabled, which is what we want overflow i'm actually going to change my overflow to ellipsis i just want dot 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 the point of that is we could go through a whole overly complicated way of making it so that the player can click on this that and the other to make the text scroll or whatever but realistically if you are using this engine that we're creating to make a visual novel you should know not to make your text too long before hitting the next line. So that uh, it would be over overly complicated, unnecessarily so, to go through the hassle of making this wrap and scroll and all that. So I've just gone with ellipsis to make it nice and simple. I'm also gonna click on extra settings and I'm gonna add some margins. I'm gonna go with five, 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 five. As you can see now, our text box nicely fits inside there and it's not going to change. Now, 
I would strongly recommend not having auto size selected for your dialogue text. It is incredibly jarring having the text that you're reading change size from a line of dialogue to line of dialogue. Every time you click the text coming up, it's going to be a different size. We don't want that. We want it to stay uniform throughout. Okay, so that's pretty much everything that we need to do with that. If we were to click on play now, you can see that our new text has appeared. It looks a little bit in a weird position though compared to um, everything else. So I'm actually going to increase the size. No, I don't want to increase the size of the sprite. I want to increase the size of the text object. So let's just try and drag that up a smidge more. But yeah, let's do that. It's actually scaling the sprite, which is fine. Okay, let's leave that like that for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this text box object to dialogue underscore text with a capital T for text just to keep everything nice and uniform. Okay, nice and simple there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing for the nameplate, we're going to create a text mesh pro object. As you can see, it's friggin' massive. So what we need to do is adjust the size of our font considerably smaller. And we also need to change the size of our box so that it actually matches the size of the object for which it is contained within. And that's going to be a bit of a fiddle, but we will find the... Oh, nearly had it then. There we go. We want it to fit within there. Now then. You've got multiple options. You can, again, fix your size. I will set my text alignment in the nameplate to be left justified, but centrally aligned so that it stays in the middle of the nameplate. And I'm also going to add margins. This time I'm going to add 10, 5, uh, 10, 5, so that it's slightly off the left-hand side. And then we can always increase the size of our nameplate object like so and then as you can see that our text is currently centrally aligned so what we want to do is change the anchor to be aligned to the left hand side staying central drag that back there now when we adjust the size of our nameplate that should remain on the left yeah there we go that's better we don't know exactly how large the text is going to be so again we can set this to automatic we could have it automatically scale but to be honest having the user interface change again arbitrarily when we change the name of the character it's going to be a little bit jarring so all we have to do is just set this to be a certain size and then just have it set that way you don't even have to have a nameplate sprite you could put both your text objects within the dialog box and just have the name appear at the top of the text here entirely up to you how you do it i'm not going to tell you how to design your visual parts of your game that's up to you. All I'm going to do is rename my text object's name here. And this is going to be name plate underscore text like so. Now we have our text objects. And if I hit play, what we can see is that they stay in there like that. That's exactly what we want. Now, before we start putting text in here, there's another piece of arguably fundamental functionality that visual novels have particularly rempi games that we want to be able to implement here and because we've done this the way we have I, we have two canvases one for the background images and one for our ui elements we're actually in a really fortunate position because we can implement this super easy so what we do is in our scripts we're going to open up our input decoder script and our testing scripts and we're going to implement some code so here we are within our input decoder script and what I'm going to do is underneath my character list I'm going to create a new public static and this time it's going to be a game object and we're going to call this one let's just say interface elements nice and simple equals game object dot find and we're going to input some curly braces and then we're going to go input underscore uh, UI underscore elements 
and we're going to double check that that is actually what our canvas is called ui underscore elements yes it is we can actually select it and we could just copy and paste this text if we wanted to Control c there and then double click on this and Control v to make sure that we've actually got the correct one set that's all we need to implement inside our input decoder because if you remember there's no update class or no update method within our input decoder class so we can't do anything like getting keyboard input from here so what we have to do is inside our testing script we've got a void update method here so what we're going to do is we're going to say if open parentheses input dot get key get key down like that and then we're going to just simply say h h is the sort of standard key that we want to utilize all we're going to do is we're going to say if uh, open brackets now then we need to say input decoder input decoder dot ui and then if we start typing that we should interface elements is what we're after interface elements dot is active in hierarchy i think it's active in hierarchy i think that's the command we're after and then we are no definition for is active in hierarchy we're saying interface elements if that game is we might just have to be active in hierarchy that's why there's no is at the front of it silly me so now we're saying if it is active we're going to input decoder dot interface elements dot set active open brackets and we're going to say false so what we're saying is if it is active we're going to hide it now we're going to say else input decoder interface elements set active true so the editor again knew what i wanted to do and it's implemented it for me and that's all we have to do for that functionality we can now come back to our editor it's going to have a bit of a think for a second and now if we were to run our code we can see we've got our background image we've got our interface there and if i hit h hides the hides the ui and print it again and it comes back so there you go some really really solid functionality there really simple to implement and it's just going to improve the quality of life for those people who do want to see the whole image and depending on how you design your UI, it may be all the more important. If, for example, you don't have an, any opacity in your uh, text box or your nameplate, they're going to obstruct a, a large portion of the image. So having the ability to hide the interface is incredibly useful. So I think that about wraps it up for this episode, guys. Thanks ever so much for watching. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.